Hey everybody, this is Russ Carson Jr., one of the genealogists here at Family Tree Nuts. And I'm in Frenchburg, Kentucky. I'm in Bethel Baptist Church with a uh, Reverend uh, Joseph Sherman Rhodes Jr. We call him Buddy, uh, uh, Pastor Buddy Rhodes. And uh, Buddy is, uh, how old are you now, Buddy? I'm 89. If I make it till March 2nd, I'll be 90 years old. Almost 90 years old. So. Um, pastor Rose ha uh, has been a minister almost all of his life, and he was the pastor at this church for over 50 years, and we're going to tell some stories about that here in a little bit, but I wanted to introduce him to you, and we're going to uh, be interviewing him, asking him lots of questions about his life, and he's, he's sort of a pillar of the community here in, uh, in, uh, in Frenchburg and Menifee County, and a uh, very well-known person, and has lived a pretty exciting life, I think, but uh, we're going to learn some of those stories today. Are you excited? Ready? Yes, sir. And, and beside him here, we've got uh, his son, uh, John Rhodes, and uh, your middle name Sherman too, isn't it? It is. That's right. So we named him after Union Generals. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I like that. But uh, um, we're here with it, you know, his son, and he's going to help us out with the interview process of uh, some stories about his dad. So, so well, I guess we'll get started. You want to say anything in the beginning, John? No, just look forward to it. How about you, Pastor Rhodes? Just ready, whatever. All right. I'll, I'll yes, sir. Question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can, tell, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, we'll start at the beginning. You know, when, when was you born? Where was you born? Tell us about, about your mom and dad a little bit. Okay. Uh, I was born right here in uh, Menifee County, uh, uh, not too far from here, in, uh, in a home uh, in March uh, 2nd, 1930. Okay. Were you born right here in town, or did you live out in the county, or? We're uh, oh, about a quarter of a mile from here, down uh, 36 here. At that time, it was uh, my dad uh, had bought a farm there, and uh, we lived in. Uh, uh, there's a little little history to that. Uh, yeah, let's hear. It. My dad. Uh, uh, of course, uh, my mother's father died pretty young. I think he was in his forties, probably. And he had uh, he had five boys and two girls. They lived in an area here in the county that, back in those days, uh, people uh, they sold their corn in gallons instead of. Uh, bushel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sold their corn, and, sold yeah. their corn in gallons, not yeah, bushels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, I think uh, I know what you mean, sir. Yeah, <laughs> they uh, did quite a bit of uh, moonshining in the area, and uh, on weekends over in there, there's quite a bit of drinking, and uh, then which led to shooting and knives and all. And one of the last requests that my mother's daddy made, he asked my dad to get his boys out of that community. Yes, sir. And so my dad bought this farm, uh, 200 acres, and it at the time had been called the uh, uh, county poorhouse. It was a huge house, that, uh, and uh, he bought that farm and uh, moved uh, all of my mother's family in that uh, to uh, get them in there and uh, oh this and, is the house next to brenda and, and by mickey right no no it was another house on down oh road. okay mm -hmm. on down no, uh not there anymore. it's not there anymore it's, it's right across, the, the site is right across the the creek there from the Clark Energy Building. Okay, sir. Right down the road here, and uh, now it was the county poorhouse. At the time, yeah. He bought the county poorhouse. At, uh, but at at uh, at one time, uh, Brenda's mom and dad uh, owned that and lived there. Dad let them have that property, and uh, <laughs> they uh, they lived there for some time until he moved in across the road 
over there and built now, the other houses. But uh, now, now these folks that you're talking about um, were the prophets. Yeah, your, your mother's prophets, people were the yeah, prophets. Right, and they lived up what they call what is it, Indian Creek, Indian right? Indian Creek, right. It is uh -huh. the name of that community. Yeah. yeah. And you get there by going up by the high school and running yeah, that out yeah. there, and they're buried out there. Seven thirteen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, so it's a anyway, rowdy place. That's, uh, I was I was born right there, that place, and they, there was a huge old cedar tree in the front yard there, right. And they tell me that the uh, night I was born. There came a big wet snow, and the branches of that tree were touching the ground. It was weighted down with the wow. snow or so. But, uh, well, that's a neat story. <laughs> huh. Yeah. That's a uh, history. Tell so us you, how you got your... Go ahead. I was going to say, so you were born in the county poorhouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. You started in the poorhouse. Yeah, started, started out. You started out, right? Yeah. <laughs> From day one. <laughs> but uh, I don't reckon you stayed there. Um, uh, t how did you get your name? I know you're, de you're, de you're named after your father. You're junior, obviously, like myself. Yes, but, uh, uh, you go by Buddy. My right. My dad was born in 1867. Say, just what, after. What, when was your dad born? Say it again. 1867. 1867. Just after the Civil War. Amazing. And all of his brothers except one was named after Civil War general. Were they were they Confederate generals? No. no they were Union <laughs> <Union> generals. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I'd be afraid to go down through Atlanta, you know. <laughs> Joseph Sherman. Yeah. Yeah, they don't uh, like that name down there. Yeah. If you're watching from Atlanta, yeah, I know you don't like to hear that name. So we gotta be careful not to offend some yeah. people. So. <laughs> and yeah, he had uh, one of his brothers was named after a French general, but I, I've... Is it Lafayette? Lafayette, that's right. He's the one. And the others were Civil War general there. And, uh, and one, one uh, had several, had two or three names. They called him Shug. What, yeah. What was his oh, name? We know he him. was named his, uh, and he was an attorney. Uh, he was, uh, his name was Samuel Ulysses Grant Rhodes. And so he just went by his initial S-U-G. They called him Chu. He ended up in the newspapers, didn't he? Well, he could have. He, yeah. <laughs> he, had, he, had some, he had some notoriety, didn't he? Yeah. He, you, he you, was, you could Google him, right? So yeah. you could Google Shug Rhodes. Yeah. yeah. He was, I did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did you? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I understand he was the first uh, person uh, every, uh, ever ever uh, bugged electronically in the state of West Virginia. That's pretty neat. The first person that, 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 that like the, was it the FBI or CIA or something was? I don't know who, who did it, it, but it was uh, some of the law enforcement people did. That's a pretty neat story. Yeah. So, he, so this is your uncle. Was what, what 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 was he again? He was the first what? He was the first person that was electronically bugged, surveilled, electronic uh, surveillance. Yeah. In West Virginia, yeah. Yep. That's, in the state of West Virginia. I think he was in Mingo County too, wasn't he? Living in Williamson. Yes. Uh huh. He was an attorney. Was it? You know, He's in Williamson. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe some in Logan. Um, I don't. I know that area. Sure my, that. my mother's people are from that area, so uh, my, my, dad, was uh, my dad was in Logan County some and he was he might have been superintendent at one time. I I know that he taught school on the same creek where Devil Lines Hatfield lived. Right, so so he, he he was a he was in Logan West County, West Virginia. Yes, uh -huh. But this is before your time, you know, obviously. Would have been yeah. late 1880s? Yeah. Uh, late 1890s? Whenever, you know, uh, Devil Lance was there. He's, he has spent the night with his, with Devil Lance, that field in his. 
So home there, and uh, your father spent the night at Devil Ants Hatfield's house. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's pretty dabber cool, I think. So he taught school up there. So and, and what was the purpose of his visit to Devil Ants? Pardon? What was the purpose of his visit to to go to Devil Ants's house? I don't know the reason was for it, being there. He was uh, was he a truant? Truancy well, officer? But that wasn't uh, the case with Devil Hans. He said they treated him real well. They were uh, that, that, uh, that Devil Hans was uh, he would treat you nice as long as you didn't try to meddle in his business sure. affairs. But uh, it could have been early 1900s. I don't. Th I think he didn't yeah. die till 1927 or something yeah. like that. But uh, <clears throat> my dad, when when he was a attendance officer there in West Virginia, now he got shot one time. With, uh, uh, there's a boy that had been out of school, and uh, he went to check to see why the boy wasn't in school. And these folks lived on a little hill off the road, and. Uh, Dad started up the hill to the house, and he got up the hill to our ways, and some fella stepped out of the barn with a shotgun and leveled down on him, and he died for the bushes. The guy got him in the shoulder. Wow. Shots. He got a few uh, shots in his shoulder, but he found out that uh, the reason the boy was out of school was they was bringing in a load of moonshine and uh, the man helped, had the boy out to help him and they thought dad was a revenuer. Sure, he probably had a suit on. and Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> dad always wore the suit and tie and uh, they thought he was a revenue agent. And, wow. Uh, That's no joke up there. He, even in Menifee County there's a whole lot of stories like that. Yeah. There's the moonshine yeah. out in the county. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've uh, even when uh, when I was young, I'd gone out some of these county roads, and you could see back up on the hill, you could see a little smoke coming up at times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. You, I guess. Yeah, you I guess. Didn't know if people were picnicking up there, mom. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sure they were having a picnic. Yeah. Yeah. And they could see that little smoke up there in the morning early yeah, coming out. Did you have any experience of that as a as a, as a boy, like no. out in the community, and that don't go up his no. holler because you know that that's no. going on? Or? No. <laughs> so you grew. You well, we didn't finish your story on how you got your name. Why you go by Buddy? Well. Uh, my oldest sister, Anna May, uh, when she was born, um, all the neighbors, they, of course, was coming in to see this new baby, and some old lady in the community there, she came in and she grabbed her, picked her up, and she says, well, little Joe, uh, she looked so much like Dad, she called her Joe, and that name stuck with her. Although her name, her official name was Anna May, they, everybody called her Joe. And of course, when I come along, they named me Joe, but uh, she already had the, <laughs> <laughs> she already name, had the name, so they hung another nickname on me, uh, called me Buddy. Yeah. But, uh, you know, how my dad got down here from West Virginia uh, while he was teaching in West Virginia, he came down to Berea College to get some refresher courses or do some studying. He, and uh, of course he rode the train down to Berea but uh, as they came along, there's a little community about 15 miles from here over towards, on 36, towards Orangeville, called Olympia. And uh, he met a couple people on the train from that community. 
And when they found out that he was a preacher, they asked him to come and hold a revival for them there in Olympia. And on the date that he was supposed to come, he came up, rode the bus up uh, through Frenchburg. And he got to Frenchburg and somebody was supposed to pick him up, but they told him there that they had a typhoid epidemic in Olympia and it was quarantined. Wow. And uh, the Methodist church, which at that time was uh, probably the biggest and most active church in the, the county, was right across the street from the bus station. And they got the word some way that dad was headed for Olympia and they couldn't go. They came to him there at the bus station and said, since you were here, said, uh, why don't you just come over to our church, the Methodist church there, and uh, have your revival there. And uh, the uh, pastor up at the Presbyterian church, he said, I'll be glad to lead the singing and uh, help. So dad uh, preached there at that Methodist church here down uh, uh, for 10 days. They had a wow. 10 day, Ten day revival. revival and they had 70 people saved. 70? 70. 70 people wow. saved. And from then on he was just in demand around here and he wound up settling. Here. And that would have been in the 20s, like early 20s. You uh, were born in 30. Well, now, he founded this church in 1915. Oh. Okay, uh, so he founded it, left, and then went to Berea. Okay. So yeah. And, uh, now I'm tracking. T t how, did, how did he end up here in the first place? I know the story, but I want to hear. I want uh -huh. Everybody out here wants to hear how, how, he, found, how he ended up here and uh, and the first time. Uh, well, like I said, you know, he was headed for Olympia and they had the revival there. That's how, came he, how come he got here to Menifee County. But uh, he was, uh, he had been out in the county for a meeting and uh, he decided to take a shortcut back home he was on one of those ridges out in the county here, and he came over the hill down a uh, holler. What was, was he walking? No, he was riding his own mule. Riding a mule. Yeah. And uh, he came along the road, uh, the old road down near, they called it Hog Branch. Uh, there was a little girl playing in her yard right out on the edge of the road as he come along and he stopped to talk to her and ask her if she was a Christian and she didn't know what he's talking about. And uh, he had to talk with her a while. He, he just seemed like he got the feeling that they needed a church in that community. And so uh, he got in contact with a couple other preacher friends and they got the schoolhouse and down in the community they called it Havana. Havana. Havana, yeah. The fellow down there that named the community, he had been in the Spanish war, he had been to Cuba. Right. And uh, he named it Havana. And, and I think they called it Havana though. Havana, Havana, Havana yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was the schoolhouse where they had their revival. And they had several people saved and they organized a church. Someone had property right across the road and donated the building site. They went right across the road from the schoolhouse and built. I see. Built the church and. Uh, so the revival was prior to that then? The revival here at, in Frenchburg? Yes, uh huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, uh huh. Because they had. Uh, that time he'd, uh, he'd bought a farm down there and moved to 
the family over and uh, but it was yeah he was it, the one that Havana was a different revival from what he had and they organized Bethel Baptist Church. And, uh, so Bethel Baptist got church by your your father. Yeah, they asked him to name it, and uh, so he named it uh, Bethel. Do you know why? Why Bethel? Yeah, because of uh, the story of Jacob and uh, just how Jacob uh, wrestled with the Lord there, and uh, he said, you know, God surely in this place, and he called it Bethel. Neat. So that's uh, great yeah. story. Yeah, but I think it's a really neat story. 1915, he's riding a mule yeah. out some ridge line, you know, some holler somewhere, and met a little girl, and and that's a that's a wonderful story. I think the, of how this church uh, was was founded, and then he was a pastor here for how long himself? Well, you know, he he never was uh, really a, a pastor. He okay. founded it, he found but it. he had his preacher friends. That were pastor. He was uh, more of a circuit riding preacher. He go out okay. and preach to different churches, and also uh, he taught music too. He uh, he ordered a, his song books from a, a company. Uh, I believe it's up in Fen Castle, Virginia, where it was. A book called. Uh, best of all hymn book and in the back of that book there was a few pages that called the rudiment of music and it had these shaped notes and staffs and all that so he, he taught music from the shaped notes and wow uh, where, where did he teach that in his home or in, in the in churches school? around uh -huh. and uh, yeah in, in various churches he'd go and he'd teach Right. Teach them in uh, how to. That you all, but you, you actually grew up in town, right? In the city of Frenchburg? Yeah. Well, right, yeah, I grew right up, here. I grew up here. Uh, we, uh, I, I spent a little time in West Virginia. Sometimes, you know, uh, uh, He'd go, he still taught school in West Virginia at times, and they'd go up there during the school season and then come back okay. here during the summer. And uh, Wow. I, uh, I, I was under six years old, I know, back when I, because I'd never, I never had to start a school. Well, I think I found you guys on the 1940 census living down there in, in, is it maybe McDowell County? McDowell County, I think, maybe south of Logan there. But I don't know if you lived there very long, but I saw your, you know, your two sisters and your moms listed yeah. on there. But you may have only lived there for a few weeks, but you're yeah, on there. Yeah, probably was because, uh, you know, this, uh, the French work school here is the only school I went to, I started there when I was six, and, uh, but, uh, <coughs> we, uh, where was I? What, what year did you graduate? Was it 48? I graduated 48. 48. Now, what, one of the things I thought was really impressive is you and your two siblings, all three of you graduated high school. Yeah. You know, in the 40s. And when people dropped out of high school quite frequently into the 70s and 80s even. So mm -hmm. your, your, your father, your family, your mother, your family really put a value on education. Yeah. And, you know, because it was impressive to, that they finished. You know, your sisters both graduated. And, and right. uh, that's a pretty, yeah. that's, that was very, I don't want to say odd, but that was very rare, I guess, that uh -huh. people would continue to finish that way. Especially in a mountain community. Yeah. Yeah. I graduated and. May and married in June. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of things I was going to I was going to ask about too. Now, didn't Paul also found uh, your dad? We all called him Paul growing up. He also founded some other churches around in this community, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, where Pine Grove and uh, was Pine there one Branch. in Olympia? Pine Branch and the Olympia, and uh, he worked with different 
different churches, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he was instrumental in different ones, yeah. Now the one he built down at Havana, didn't he didn't he go work out of state for a period of time to yeah. help pay um, for that? What? During the during the summer, that summer, why well, he went to Billings, Montana. Wow. Worked in the freight yard out there to make money to buy material for the church. And he said every night he'd come in from work, he'd count to see how many boards he was able to buy. Wow. Uh, he was buying the siding for the church. And when he got up to the gabled ends of the building, then he quit and come home when they went to work on it. Uh, now why Billings? <laughs> why did he go to Billings? What was... I don't know why he went there. Because this was a team right, right, had a right before label. World War One. This would have been 1915, 1916, yeah. right before World War One. Yeah. yeah. The church was built in 1950, or, or started in 1915. The construction of so, it? Uh, well, they had it in the it was, schoolhouse for a little bit, he said. Well, it was... Uh, it was dedicated in 15 in uh, oh. August. Our homecoming is August 15. In uh, August. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. We so were, this past August, it, it was yeah, 104 it, years up yeah. To leave Menifee County, Kentucky to Billings, Montana and the team, 19 teens, would have been like another yeah. planet, you know, kind of thing. That's a that's a pretty far place. That's pretty far away. Yeah. That's a neat yeah. story. So, uh, 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 in addition to those churches, um, so uh, now too, uh, I know there was some talk about his his strength as a young man when they were preparing the foundation for that church. Cause he was a big fellow, wasn't he? Yes, uh -huh. yeah, he was pretty big. Yeah. What? There was a story about the he, they needed a rock move. Yeah. Well, yeah. On that, uh, one of the old fellows was telling me about. Uh, when they were laying the foundations for the church, they just used rock and all and said, him and another fella was standing there looking at a big rock. They was wondering how they was going to get it over to the foundation. And he said, uh, Dad, come along. And he said, uh, what, what you doing? And he said, we trying to figure out how we're going to move that rock over there. He said, where did you want it? And he, told me he just picked it up and carried it over there. <laughs> so I'm it down. Wow. How, how tall was he? He's six feet. He's yeah, six feet he's tall? About, he's about my size. You're six right? foot tall yeah. also. Yeah. All the Rhodes folks are pretty tall, right? Yeah. They're taller than normal. I mean, they're not six foot six, but they're all taller than normal. Height yeah. is a... Your sister Juanita was yeah. five ten, I think, or you know, right. which is yeah. my wife's mamma, but uh, yeah. my wife's five ten too. So mm -hmm. height comes. That's where the height comes from. But uh, your your sons are all tall too, aren't they? Yeah. So, so. Yeah. So, do you know? Do you know anything about you, you know your father was a teacher and a, and a minister and and a truancy officer and and uh, where did he get his education? What what are some? Has he ever told told you any stories about you know when he went to school and did he go to college at all or? Yeah, or in Berea, he got some at Berea. Right. Or that's you know that's where he uh, met those people, how come he came out here to French Berea? It, and that's something too, it's little things that I think about as a genealogist. If Berea College never existed, you may never have existed, yeah, I, right? Yeah. You know, little things like that. If Jacob Fee, who started Berea College, didn't have his calling, you know, by God to do that, you may not, your whole family may not even existed. You're, yeah, you wouldn't have you came here, yeah, so. You never know. Little things like that I think about, so. So, but and then uh, your dad, you, you lived in town. I know uh, your sister had told me that uh, Juanita um, had said that you guys were one of the first folks that had some indoor plumbing. <laughs> that, that she used to say that back in the back in the thirties, yeah, kind of thing. Indeed, yeah. Do you remember any stories like that? No, I don't. 
don't uh, don't remember much on that. I, I know when, okay. you know, when, we, when we got it. <laughs> do you remember, uh, like when you were a little boy, you know, what was what was some of the your favorite things to do as, as a little boy? Did you guys play ball or? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, my dad was, uh, he was up in years when I was born. And, oh, that's right. That's another we story. We didn't have much, uh, <laughs> you know, he didn't have much interest in athletics and things like that. Uh, I, uh, there wasn't a whole lot to do. We we run around with these uh, hoops. And uh, one of the things when I was a kid, they had these uh, iron, uh, wheels was well, just an iron ring is what it was just a metal ring and uh, we had a wire like a little paddle and you run along and run that thing <laughs> run it through town right yeah you get it rolling and you just keep you know <coughs> that what? wire up again it and keep it going you, you, didn't have video, you, didn't have, that. you didn't have any video games no, we, we, we didn't get in on that. <laughs> now, what, what, was, what was the point of keeping that ring rolling? Just to see how far you could get it to well, go? You, without... just, you just run along, you know, just like, uh, uh, I don't know what you, what it, just a hand maybe. I remember you talking about sometimes on your journeys back from, from West Virginia, Certain store you stopped at. You told some yeah. story about us. a certain was, uh, store you stopped yeah. at that you had some kind that of was when we memory we about it. Moved, yeah. Uh, Dad, of course, he he told lots of stories about uh, the Indians and you know with uh, Daniel Boone and a lot of those uh, stories. He'd keep the kids spellbound. He'd tell all of these stories to the young people and. Uh, I remember that when we moved back from West Virginia, you know, I couldn't have been more than five years old probably, but it still stands out in my mind that uh, this uh, fellow, there was a local man that came up there with the truck and got us. And the first stop we made when we crossed the river into Kentucky was the little community called Tomahawk. Yeah, I know Tomahawk, Martin County. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, see, Dad had talked to us all the time about the Indians and their Tomahawks and all Yeah. That. that always stood out in my mind. We stopped there at a store and got a drink and, and uh, but, uh, and then some years later when I was pastoring here, I found out we had a, lady in the church here from Tommy Hall. How about that, huh? <laughs> that was something, yeah. That's a neat she was a teacher up here. She'd come down here and she married a How about that? man near the church. And, uh, I have some cousins who live right near there. So, yeah, that's a that's pretty neat. <laughs> Is that when you were going? Now, did you ever get to go? Now, your dad was originally from Ripley, near Ripley, right. West Virginia, in Jackson yes. County, West yes. Virginia. Right. So, uh -huh. it, were, were you, and, oh, and he met your mother, you know, uh, um, here in town, but we'll talk about that here in a second, but um, how old was your dad when you were born? When I was born? Well, let's see. He was, <laughs> he was born in 1867, and I was born in 1930. That would have been, uh, uh, he would have been, 63. 63 years old. He's a man, wasn't he? Yeah. So he was a man. <laughs> he was a man. You know, he had yeah. he, he, he had a, he had babies in his late foot late fifties and, and early sixties. That he, he, yeah. I kind of admire him. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but your yeah. mother was much younger. So yes. much younger. Yeah, she, so. Was, she was quite a bit younger than him. Yeah. How, how, how many years difference? How old was she when they got married? I don't know. You know when your mom was born? No, not right off. I can't. But there was an age gap there, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was, there was big, an age gap. There was a big age gap, yeah. 
How old was she when she passed away? 90, was it 94? Her age? She was in her 90s. Uh, but, uh, she passed away on the... Let me see, she would have been... Going around... I guess My boys were... It was their 13th birthday. 15 the day she passed away. along in there, maybe in 1915. So, if, if let's see, my boys were born in 1982, James and John, and uh, she and that was their 13th yeah. birthday, the day she passed she away. Born probably around 1900, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. 1903. Oh, 1903. Okay. 1903, passed in 95. Okay. 92, mm -hmm. and that's uh, Mazella. Uh, Prophet, Prophet Rose, mm -hmm. right? Mazel, everybody called her Granny, right? Uh -huh. So, yeah. and they, they tell me she loved the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, that's what right. I like the Reds. Dad, the Reds there. So, got my ancestry app right here, guys. She, you got to have yeah. it in your pocket all the time. So, Dad called her Baby May. Baby May. Baby May. Yeah. Baby May. Yes. She watched the Reds when nobody else would. Right. <laughs> and you, your dad called her Baby May. That's a neat little story yeah. there. So yeah. if he was born in 67 and she's born in 03, there's a good chunk right there. It was yeah. about 36 years difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now today we were thinking, oh my gosh, that's that's crazy. But that wasn't that uncommon, you know, back then. So no. how, now how did you remember how we did, have you ever heard how your parents met? How they know each other? He was uh, preaching over there, having revival then. Up in Indian Creek? In Indian Creek, yeah, he preached over there, uh, I bet. Sure. So she would have been 20 or something like that, and then he would have been in his 50s yeah. kind of thing. So, But yeah. times were different back then, quite a bit. So, and, uh, But in the 20s, I guess, there, so early 20s. Good story there. Good story. Did yeah. you have any of your friends? You know, the, who were some of the fellows that you used to run around with when you was a boy? Who were some of your buddies? Your buddies' uh, buddies. My <laughs> buddies. Well, one of them was uh, uh, Kenneth Armitage. When I was fifteen, we we run around quite a bit together. What was he the, your your witness at your wedding? No, no. it was uh, Kenny Montgomery. Okay. But was my witness. He was, he was in the same class with me, and uh, he he had gotten married a few months before. Yeah. And he was an expert, you know. He knew <laughs> he knew all the ropes now, where to go and get it done, you know. And uh, since it took. All day, or to get uh, your license. Or, yeah, tell, or, tell, yeah, tell us about the I was going to ask about that. Now, t tell us a story where you, uh, the day before your big wedding day, what what'd you do? You made a little trip up to Pomeroy? Yeah. Uh, we wanted to get, you know, an early start Monday to get down there and get our license. And, uh, uh, so I went up Sunday afternoon and picked up Wilma and brought her down to Dad's. And, and uh, we we got up then and left uh, early Monday morning. Picked up my buddy Kenny up there and went to Mount Sterling to get uh, her license. What, what uh, year was this? That was in, in 48. 1948. Yeah. yeah. June, June the 14th. Uh, uh, and uh, that day, or the day before, maybe it was, that Dad, uh, he, he, they knew, you know, I was thinking uh, my mom was wanting me to take a law scholarship to Louisville Law School. Okay. Her and the principal up here, they had wanted me to go to law school. I had a scholarship offer, and, uh, but 
I, I had other things on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you all meet you and, and my dad? Now, dad told me, he called me in there in the room and he told me, he said, now, whatever you decide, he said, we're, we're behind you. And he gave me a big $20 bill. <laughs> and uh, that was enough to get my license and pay the preacher. And <laughs> yeah. So, so you went up to Mount Sterling, did your blood work and your medical work and all that. Yeah. Kind of thing. And then, and then all, you're on, you, now you got your license, you could go get married. Yeah. So did you wait a couple of weeks to get married after no. that? Or? <laughs> well, on our way home. <laughs> <laughs> we went to. Uh, we, uh, we went down there and got the license, and then on our way home, we You didn't even make it back home. Uh-uh. <laughs> and here's the, there's a preacher here. We would just go down there. And, and it's only, what, 25 yeah. miles or something? That yeah. You couldn't make it 25 yeah. miles down the road. <laughs> well, I don't know. Kenny might have. He might have gotten married there, too. I know he was the one that advised us all. <laughs> <laughs> he was the Your wedding planner, <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> Kenny Montgomery, yeah. wedding planner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. Now, how did you and Mom meet? We met uh, at a Valentine party. Uh, a girl in my class was having a Valentine party, and. Uh, she invited us there, and we we met. That was her first date at that one wedding blind party. And Did you guys go to school together? Yeah, I was. She was a sophomore. I was a senior. Okay. You know, and we uh, you know we got married June fourteenth. I was eighteen. And she turned 16 in August. Okay. <laughs> she was still 15 years old. How about that? Married. We, it's kind of funny, we went in this doctor there to get her exam, her physical, and of course he knew we were young, you know. And he, he told us, you know, he said, you know, he said, uh, I've had, uh, some young people come in here that's planning on getting married, and he said, uh, I'd tell them to take a piece of paper, write the number 21 on it, and put it in their shoe. And he says, then if they ask you at the clerk's office how old you are, tell them you're over 21. Because <laughs> you had to be 21 to have not have permission, I guess? Or? Yeah, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. 21 or 16? 21. To 21. You can get married with permission. Oh, at 16. Yeah. With but, permission. Uh, but without her parent permission, yeah. So she wasn't even 16 yet. No. So, yeah, so technically she couldn't even got married <laughs> legally, right? You must have really wanted to marry her, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She she was an awesome lady. We was both wanting her pretty bad. Yes, she what, sure was. What was your wife's name? Wilma. Wilma. Yeah. Now your sister labeled her Lemon. Lemon. How did she get that nickname? It, it well, Lemon. Aunt Joe that named her yeah. Lemon. Well, after our date, that she she sent me a Valentine, and uh, that Valentine it said. And it says, if you're, if you think I'm such a lemon, let's just try squeezing. <laughs> and uh, oh, that's pretty good. Joe saw that, that she hung that name on her, and uh, you think I'm such a she lemon? She called her that all of her life, and even uh, Joe's children uh, called her. Aunt Lim. Aunt Lim. Aunt Lim. Frankie mm -hmm. over there when he yep. passed away, he'd still call her Aunt Lim. I've never heard that story. What, yeah. What's what's her last name? Her maiden name? Bryant. Bryant. Yeah, yeah. Wilma Bryant. And they were from Palmer. 
Pumroy. Pumroy. Yeah. And you know, uh, uh, just after she passed away, that June, we would have been married 70 years. We'd 70 been married years. 69 years, six months, 11 days. 69 years, six months, and 11 days. Yeah, and, uh, but we would have had her 70th anniversary that June the 14th, so I, I retraced her steps and uh, the, on the 13th, I got in her car, that old Lincoln over there, and drove up to her home place in Pumroy. I turned the radio on, and it was set on Stanton, had that trading post on. <laughs> and I drove up to her old home place, I sat there a few minutes. Then as I backed out, start home, the trading post went off. Yeah. And a uh, new program coming on. And the first song that they played on that, I'd never heard it before, was his Buddy Davis singing, What Would I Do Without You? Mm -hmm. or, no, he said, I can't imagine me without you. That's mm -hmm. the name of the song. And, uh, Allison called me and I was telling her about that and by the time I got home she had it on my iPad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she got it some way recorded it. And then, it. and then in about a week I got uh, this little package through the mail and it was a CD of Buddy Davis and it had that it had that song on it. Uh, I can't imagine me without you. And, uh, wow. And then it had another one on there too that was real good for us. That uh, that wedding picture, some fella. The story of the song was this old fella sitting there looking at the wedding picture, you know, with them, and he said, you know, they had. If he had his life to live over, he'd still want to be in that picture mm -hmm. with her. It was wow. Real good, didn't it? She located that CD up here at uh, uh, at uh, the Noah's Art place. Oh, yeah, right. The Jesus. Right. Yeah, that's where she got it. That's what I was at. He was right. associated with them. Well, Wemma was your best friend, I reckon, right? Wemma was your best friend. Yeah. Now, yeah. To, to, to a lot of people, I mean, you, you said you were married 69 years, six months, and 11 days. Right. You know, a lot of people don't live that long, you know, kind yeah, of thing. That's right. What, yeah. what, what, what's the secret to that? <laughs> I mean, you, well, let me back up. How long did you date before you married? Uh, let's see. A little over a year. A little over a year. Okay. And, but but so really you've had we, over 70 years. We met, uh, you know, we dated in uh, February 14 to 47. Okay. We married in June of 48. Got it. So, yeah. so over 70 years, you know, um, of your life you've been attached to her. Yeah. And what, what, what's the secret to that? I mean... Uh, Two words. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking for some major words yeah. of wisdom here. But <laughs> yeah. Yes, dear. <laughs> but you know, there's from uh, she lived longer than anybody in her family had. She outlived. Uh, and, and talk, tell, tell a little bit about Wilma, your wife, and the, some of the things that she done in her life. Because from somebody who's you know in the family but outside a little bit, it, he, he, he's uh, she was uh, she's spoken about in, as a saint, you know, kind yeah, of thing. So she was, uh, to, yeah. tell a little bit about what well, she, she did in her was, life. Uh, 
she really had a, a love for people. She loved people. And uh, before before I ever became pastor of the church, uh, any time we had a visiting evangelist or missionary, we put them up. They stayed with us. And uh, she fed them and took care of them. And uh, uh, she... Uh, she had uh, uh, just a burden for people and loved, uh, loved to care for them. Uh, in church camps? Uh, yeah, she, uh, well, uh, one of the older ladies uh, in the church that was real close to her, uh, uh, she was talking about, she had came, she had been living in California and then her mother got Bad, but then she came back here to take care of her mom, and she's telling Wilma well, about their uh, church out there where they'd had this ladies' mission club, and so they uh, they got to talking. And they organized the Christian Workers Club, okay. which is. Uh, uh, at the beginning, they had ladies from other churches in, but as they dropped out, it's all involved now with the ladies of this church. And I tell you, they do an awful lot of uh, good things now, the right. Christian Workers Club. Uh, of course, just last night here, they, uh, they with our Christmas program, they see that every uh, young person, teenagers to the greater than every young person, has a gift when they come here at the uh, program. They handed out gifts to every young person here last night. And they've done that but forever. They, they, you know, they've done that for several years. Uh, they raise money throughout the year. They do that. and. Uh, was Wilma, yeah. was Wilma a good cook? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's best. Sometimes I ask questions I already know about the answer to, but. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. better than, uh, She fed a lot uh, of people what, over the years. What, what was her specialty? What was she known for? Like, everybody knows that Wilma makes the best. I don't know about that. <laughs> Lots of, yeah. lots of, lots of, a long list of things. I know her granddaughters, Allison and Angela, are trying to uh, yeah. emulate yeah. things that. Allison, uh, Wilma made also good uh, dressing, turkey, uh, cornbread dressing, and Allison, she can make it right down to tea. You can't tell the difference, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, also another one that uh, they all enjoyed is what they called the cracker chicken. Cracker chicken? Yeah, chicken that's been uh, covered with crackers. Crumbs and all of them, they bake, bake it in the oven again. Huh. It's awful good. Yeah. Yeah. Last night, Allison had some cream candy that she made from Mom's recipe. So. Yeah. Cream candy? Yeah. She made awful good that. Cream candy and a, and a chocolate fudge. Yeah. How, how many recipe. people do you think she's ever cooked for? Like, if you had it, oh, like, uh, like, if you had a, how many people has she prepared a meal for? Over the her years, it'd be over a thousand. I oh, mean, it'd, yeah, it'd be oh, ten, yeah, ten, yeah, ten thousand. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah, it'd be a lot of them. And then, of course, uh, our camp up there was her uh, idea too. She got burned about the camp, the Bible camp. Uh, yeah, tell a story about that. Well, we just uh, started. Uh, Working and praying, and God just opened up the door for us to get to, to get that. Uh, the the tabernacle up there. Now we had some some of the lumber companies here, uh, uh, Dick Pearl and Martin Pearl and Smallwood. They donated some lumber for the cabins up there. Sure. Uh, what land was it on? Well, uh, we gave uh, most of the land, uh, Wilma and I, and we, we bought one little parcel up there from uh, uh, 
uh, Kanoa, they they got the farm from Carl. Okay. Carl and Monita, they had owned it, but they had sold it to Orson and uh, Rilla Kanoa. When the dam came in, they had to leave the basin down there. But uh, uh, the first cabin we built, we got the lumber up here uh, where uh, Walker was, uh, he was redoing this, rebuilding the road up, what we call Beaver Hill up here, 460. And they had to buy some houses down there on the right of way. And uh, he gave us an old house there. And some of us went up there and tore the house down and uh, took the lumber up there and built our first cabin. Excellent. <clears throat> but now the tabernacle uh, that we have now, uh, we were having a community wide camp meeting, different churches involved in, and we were using the tent. And uh, we'd get the tent from uh, Lexington down there. But this last year, we used it. The week before that we used it, it had been up in Ripley, West Virginia, at the old church where Dad was ordained, the Baptist Temple. Wow. They had had service up there. And they had had a storm come through there, and it had ripped some of the seams in that tent. And uh, we got up there our last night on a Friday night. Uh, it came, it came a downpour up there. I mean, uh, the gully washer, they say. And the water it went through the tent and it came down. <laughs> <laughs> the, wow. It was leaking. I had to move the sound equipment and everything. But anyway, that night, as I left, I was the last one to leave. I had sound equipment. And I stopped right there uh, where the electric pole is now for our tabernacle. And uh, I prayed. I told the Lord that we needed a tabernacle. And, but we were doing some construction here at this church. I told him, I said, Lord, I don't know how we're going to pay for it, but we need one. That was on Friday night. Uh, Monday morning, uh, this preacher friend of mine that I tried to get to come here. Him and his wife came down, and Wilma and me and his wife, we went to uh, Tennessee Pigeon Forge for a couple of days. We got back on Wednesday. Thursday, about noon, the county judge called me, and he said, buddy, he said, where's Wilma? I said, she's home. And he said, well, I've been trying to call her. And she don't answer. He said, well, you go home for dinner. He said, tell her to come up and see me. And uh, I said, oh, so I told her, and she went up there. And uh, she came back. Uh, I said, well, I'm just got to shop. said, <laughs> She had already been sworn in as county clerk. Uh, the county clerk was retiring. And of course, the two girls that worked there, uh, Carla and uh, this uh, Joanne Spencer, they were both running for office. And the judge wouldn't pick between them. He didn't want to take it. So he told them, I said, the only thing I ask is that you keep them girls on and that you don't run for the office. <laughs> and, uh, but she came home and stayed I said, I don't know what the world happened. I said, thank you, Lord, for that tabernacle. And she worked there a year and a half and paid for that huh. tabernacle up there. That's where all of her, the 
Oh, oh, the salary yeah. went on that tabernacle. The incumbent was retiring in the middle of his term. So, so the judge had mom serve out the remainder of his term, a year and a half, and she used her salary to pay for that tabernacle. Awesome. She had no ever before, no involvement in politics or interest in politics. And, and the Lord just, I mean, absolutely no question. Just, wow. The Lord just said, here it is. I can, wow. you know, I can look back and see where he is just overruled, for instance. Uh, you know, I was postmaster 35 years up here. You were the postmaster for 35 years? Yeah. And uh, back in uh, 51, I guess, you know, Korean War going on. And uh, I knew it was going to get drafted. Wilma and I, we talked about it, and I said, if I have to go to service, I want to get something I can use after I get out. And I said, you know, they're talking about the Air Force having good schools. And me and another friend, we went and enlisted in the Air Force. You had to sign up for four years to go to the Air Force. And uh, in a couple of weeks, they called him, but they didn't call me. And. I waited around for a couple of weeks. I asked, I saw the recruiter up here. He said, I said, you'll be getting my way. Well, the next uh, week or two, I got my call from the draft board report for duty. Well, I went down to Winchester to all to see him. And, uh, he got on the phone tried to call the office in Louisville to see what happened. And, uh, he said, you know, he had the phone for ringing. He, had, he said, you're the one that's about to get drafted, ain't you? And I said, yeah, I got my call yesterday. And he just hung up the phone. And he said, I'm sorry. Then he said, there's nothing I can do because oh, draft board had a person. So, and I got drafted for two years. Okay. And I went in, they put me in the signal corps. In the army? In the army, yeah. They sent me to the signal corps. And then they went to Fort Mama, which had the finest technical schools in the world. And I found out that's where the Air Force was sending their people for training. Okay. And I got half my time in the army I spent in the finest technical schools in the world. Great. And uh, I had uh, had uh, four years in the Air Force if I'd have gone, but I got out. I'd been out a while and uh, I really loved electronics. I was fascinated with that and planned to go on back to school and study more and uh, get a degree in it. So you spent two years and in the Army. Electronic, yeah. But you didn't, where, where did you go besides Fort Monmouth? Alabama. You, Alabama. Yeah, at the siege of Fort Rucker. And that's where you're. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <Fort> Rucker. <laughs> and, uh. That's where you adopted your first son? Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a family yeah. joke, folks. He's yeah. not really yeah. adopted. Yeah. John thinks he is. Yeah. Or no, he yeah. thinks he is. No, he was, his brother yeah. Tim. yeah, he was, uh. We think he got exchanged in the <laughs> hospital. There's some mix up. <laughs> Uh, he was he was born here in fifty two and we didn't go to Alabama until fifty three. <laughs> but uh, but uh, anyway, but see I got out and uh post office came open and the fellow came down here and see me and told him that uh I don't know if I'd be interested in the post office. And uh, they was having a little squabble in town over who's going to get it. And see, like they didn't object to me. 
And I said, no, I'm not interested. He said, I'm going to school. He said, he left on. He came back again. And uh, you know, third time, he asked me if I'd come up and talk to him. I said, yeah, because, you know, they were always been good friends of the family. And uh, so I went up, and there was a half a dozen of them there in the room there waiting to talk to me. And finally, I agreed that they pointed out, you know, it would be a, kind of hard to go back to school with a child to support and uh, um, and finally, just as a favor to them, I agreed to try. And uh, he, uh, he, they said, you know, there's no strings attached. They said, if you don't like it, then you just you quit. And, uh, but I, I agreed to try. Well, you see, I didn't understand it, but God was giving me my support for the church here. He knew somewhere down the road I was going to be the pastor. The church was, we was running around 50 then. No way they could support a pastor. And, uh, and uh, they weren't that big of givers back then either, you know, <laughs> uh, back in when, uh, but uh, if I had uh, got my way and gone into the Air Force, I wouldn't have been available when the post office was open. Right. They lost my papers. Yeah. And uh, right. uh, God had a hand in that some way. He worked it out where the time schedule came together right. And uh, the way it turned out, uh, that post office was a perfect job for me as pastor. I could get off any time I needed to to go to the hospital or do a funeral or anything. I could get out any time I needed to get I had Perfect. A good job to perfect. take care of my family and everything. It worked out. It worked out perfect. What year did you become the postmaster here in Frenchburg? In uh, 55. 1955. And when did you retire? What did you? The last day of 89. Of 89. Last day of 89. Yeah. And uh, so what? From the post office. 35 uh, years? I, yeah. 35. And I returned the last day of 14 from the church here. Hey, Pap, I want yeah. to talk to you a little bit about, you know, you were talking earlier about when you moved back here from West Virginia, you stopped in Tomahawk. Yeah. So what are some of your childhood memories from when you moved back here? You talked about the game you played with the ring. Yeah. Chasing yeah. the ring. And <clears throat> we played a little softball, and uh, yeah. that, uh, that's about it. We, I mean, there's, well, that, there wasn't too many games to play back when. You didn't play, well, you yeah. didn't play basketball in high school. Maybe. No. Why? There's a particular reason, <laughs> wasn't there? I was, I was too shy. I was too shy. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't get out in public in them little short pants. They wore. <laughs> <laughs> so because you so, wouldn't wear the short britches. Yeah. So you. Uh, yeah. So you may. You may potentially have been a great NBA star, but you just didn't want to wear those short well, pants. Uh, That's funny because because your sister played. Your sister played yeah, basketball. The, Juanita. Yeah. The, Juanita did. The coach tried to get me to go out. He, he he came to me, doctor. I'd get me to go out, but I was just too shy to get out there. Do you wear? Do you wear? Do you wear the short pants now? Do you wear them now? Not not too often. Well, I mean, you know, only at the beach. If, uh, only at the beach. <laughs> you know, the ball players now they wear them down below their knees. Now I might have played if we'd have had uniforms like that. Them saggy ones. <laughs> When you played, yeah. they, had, they had the real short ones, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they had real <laughs> short ones back then, yeah. Well, <laughs> and well, you got interested shot. in music, right? Yeah, yeah, we uh, played some string I instruments. Wanted, uh, I wanted to 
sang like Bill Monroe, and, and uh, <laughs> Dad got me a mandolin from Sears Roebuck. I had that mandolin and learned to play a little bit on it, and uh, and we organized a little band here for a while, the Bluegrass Band. We yep. called them Beaver Valley Boys. Say, yeah. Beaver, Valley. Beaver Valley Boys. Beaver Valley Boys. Beaver Valley Boys. We had a uh, had uh, mandolin and guitar and uh, fiddle and uh, banjo. We had those instruments. In the well, who who are some of the guys that played with you? Uh, well, uh, Chuck Ledford. He was the best musician, really, of the bunch, and he. Uh, he was kind of the spokesman, uh, and uh, then George Benson, he was with us, and, uh, and Chuck Sexton played the banjo for us, and Roy Crane played the uh, fiddle, and George Benson had guitar, and uh, I had mandolin, and George Brown, he sung with us. And, uh, what, what did you do? What did you play? Mandolin? I played the mandolin. mandolin. Yeah. You sung high tenor, right? Well, <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be Bill Monroe, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, I've never heard uh, you sing high. I know that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that's what I started out for. But then we got in the... Uh, church uh, choir here and we needed a little bass singing and so I started started trying to sing a little bass along so well, that's where I wound up at. So, so the Beaver Valley Boys, you guys were on the radio right? Then Were you on the radio a little bit? Uh, I'm not sure about that but I, I, we had few concerts around and Someone here not too long ago had, a, I believe it, Mickey had a flyer where we had printed where we was going to be somewhere in the Sharpsburg or somewhere. We had the Beaver Valley Boys. So, Pretty cool. We played country music. Play country yeah, music? Bluegrass, and yeah. Old timey? Yeah. So. Bluegrass, country, yeah. Now, at what age were you then? Was that, was that? Before marriage or after marriage? Was that high school or what time it, uh, period was that? Yeah, that's after marriage, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Huh. Yeah. Now you went to uh, all 12 years of school without missing a day, right? Wow. Right, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Perfect I never, attendance. Never missed a day of school in the 12 years. So. Uh, <clears throat> I came close once when I was in the seventh grade I think uh, I got uh, the mumps in one side face <laughs> I got the mumps but just it happened that the day I got mumps was uh, they was going into semester test and uh, back then starting in seventh grade if you <coughs> If you maintained uh, B average better than a B average, you didn't have to take the semester test. So you were out of school for a couple of days there. So it just happened it hit on that time. And I, I never took a test after I got to seventh grade. Uh, you never got any C's? Uh-uh, never had any. You graduated pretty high in your class, didn't you? Yes, I was. Uh, yeah, I was uh, salutatorian in the class. So who beat you out? Uh, Dillman Lawson. Dillman Lawson. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, how many was in your graduating class? Uh, I believe it's thirty-four. Thirty-four. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Something like that. Yeah. I've seen your old class photos. Uh -huh. You know, it's pretty neat. Yeah. But uh, well, what about your involvement in the church? Because you weren't always you weren't always active in the church. No, as a young man, were you? No, no, no. So, I was I was too shy. 
I never. I, I was afraid to. Uh, mom and speak. mom and your dad, Paul, was pretty close. He he was pretty fond of her, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And uh, but you you weren't too active in church at the beginning, were you? No, no, not uh, not too active. No, not now to lie. So what finally? If, so what finally got you? Well, it just. Uh, I just got convicted I need to be involved in me. In fact, uh, you know, I was I was saved a while before I ever made a public confession. I was uh, I was uh, shy and uh, I knew, you know, if people knew I was saved, they'd say, there's that preacher road this boy, we'll call on him to testify or pray or something. I just but when I was in the service, and Dad, uh, he had a six bell, and it, it just hit me. I need to let him know. I know he'd always been concerned about me, been worried, and so I called him the day when I was in the army, and then wrote him a letter too. Tickled him to death. He just. He got on the phone with some of the friends that tell them about it. Uh, but I told them then that uh, I was ready to go to work. And when I came home from the army, him and uh, him and George Brown took me in the creek down there at the old church site. We went in, the creek was in behind the church. And, they took me out there in Beaver Creek. And the water wasn't more than knee deep there, but <laughs> they hit the bottom with me too. My back, <laughs> <laughs> my back hit a rock when they put me under. But they baptized me there, and uh, of course he was getting up in years. George helped him, and uh, they baptized me, and then I, I got involved uh, in the church. Wilma had been working to them and with them, teaching while I was in the Army. But we got involved, and uh, as the uh, day goes, the rest is history. We, uh, God blessed us. And he, so, how, your, your father lived a long time. He, uh, he died uh, four months before he hit 100. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, the thing, uh, uh, the doctor couldn't find anything wrong with him, really. He told me, uh, Dad just, uh, he lost his appetite long about Thanksgiving uh, that year. And uh, we took him to the hospital and uh, the doctor checked him out and he told me, he said, you know, I said, I can't find a thing wrong with him. He said, I could put IVs on him and, you know, uh, feed him that way. But I said, no, if there's nothing wrong, he don't want to eat. I said, we let him have it. Did, did your dad ever... What? Tell stories about his childhood to you, uh, about things he liked to do or things. Well, uh, the only thing he he talked about, uh, like they uh, uh, skated. I skated quite a bit when he was a child. Up there on day uh, had ice skates. They they done quite a bit of. Sure. He, he liked that. Because yeah. he lived in a totally different world than we did. You oh, know, he yeah. grew up. Yes. You know. But. Um, he was born in 1867, so he'd have been, a bo you know, his his youth days were the 1870s, you know, kind of thing. So. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> did, didn't he used to, didn't Paul used to tell of some family members that was actually, uh, uh, killed by Indians? Yeah. Yeah, some of his uh, 
ancestors. Uh, uh, I'm not sure which. Uh, I don't remember the whole story, which, but which some of the kids got was, away. But they were they were supposedly killed by the Indians down around Boonesboro. Some of the his ancestors had been here around Boonesboro, and uh, some of the neighbors across the hill had been sick and uh, just a couple of days went over to check on their neighbors and they didn't come home that night. So the next morning the children went to check on them and they got up on the top of the hill to where they could look over on the other place and uh, the house was still smoldering. Uh, the Indians had killed the uh, people there and burned, uh, burned the building. And someone took them, those children, back up into, uh, at that time, Virginia, to an uncle who raised them. The uncle raised them. And that, that I don't know, but that might have become West Virginia later when right. <laughs> Virginia was a pretty big state in the right. beginning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, covered a lot of territory. And then uh, because my dad was born and raised in Ripley, West Virginia. And I don't, I'm not sure just what relation, you know, they were to him. I just remember that story he told. Yeah, yeah, and I'd like to look that up, you know, and get the exact names of who that is, because I know that you had a—I uh, don't remember how many greats, but a great grandfather's name is Christopher Rhodes. That uh -huh. uh, he, he was, uh, they, his cabin was attacked and his family was killed, <laughs> and he was a boy and hid in the bushes, and he lived. Uh, he wanted. He, he lived to 113 or something like that, and he won a shooting match on Christmas Day when he was 100 years old. So that's one of your great great grandfathers. I don't remember yeah. the exact story, but we'll, we'll have to make sure we bring that forward later yeah. on. But, yeah. but yeah. Uh, what what is your earliest member or earliest memory as a, as a as a boy? What's the earliest thing that you can remember? I I don't. I'm not sure what uh, what that what that would be. I don't know when the what stand out. Um, what is any memory that you have when you were young? Well, there's, uh, I remember uh, when, when we were in West Virginia, I remember that, that, uh, that the house we lived in was uh, right close to the railroad. And uh, I, I remember my mom didn't like it when the train went by on wash days, when she had her clothes hanging out there on the line close to the railroad. And that train go by spouting out that smoke and... <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Just soot all over the yeah, clothes. Soot on their clothes, yeah. <laughs> wow. And... Uh, I can... Do you remember your remember first... That. Do you remember your first time you got a TV? The TV? No. <laughs> I don't remember the, the year, the first time, man. I remember... Were you, as, a, were you an adult or were you a, a child? Kid? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been an adult when we got to... But I remember in my youth, uh, uh, one of my brother's brothers, my uncle, her oldest brother, my uncle lived right across the road here from the church. And he was the first person in the community to get a radio. Okay. It had, uh, you know, it had about a half a dozen batteries sitting around in that radio. And the neighbors would gather in there on Saturday night and listen to the Grand Ole Opry. 
Wow. He was the only person in the community that had radio. What was his name? John Prophet. John Prophet. John M. John, John M. M. Prophet. Was and the first one to have a radio. Yeah, he was the first. And yeah. about when was that? Oh, it would have been... It would have been the 30s. The late 30s. Yes, or late... Or early 40 years. Because, because I was growed up and married in 48. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It was, yeah. It was before I got into high school. That, uh, Did they... Did they pay admission to come no. listen? Did they bring a dime or <laughs> what something? What do we do? You know, the gathering on Saturday night in uh, in the winter time, we'd get out right here uh, and gather up ice, and we'd make ice cream. And uh, my aunt, she uh, she had uh, a big old bucket. Over there, she made the ice cream, man. They didn't have an ice cream maker. She just put it in that bucket, and they'd take turns uh, sitting there and twisting that bucket by the bail. They'd get it by the bail to just twist it back and forth. And uh, then every once in a while, she'd pop that lid off and stir it up, you know. And uh, that's the way we made the ice cream. And then uh, in warm weather, uh, they made... Uh, this molasses taffy, make candy, and they'd be out there pulling that candy and huh. getting that ready to eat. So we <laughs> was that your favorites as a as a boy? I mean, I mean, and that's what we all look forward to on Saturday night, you know, there, and then uh, uh, we'd stay there until. Roy Acuff would come on at 11 o'clock and close it out. With it. He'd, <laughs> he'd sing a song, you know, a great speckled bird or wreck <laughs> on the highway or something. He'd close out always with a hymn. And, God did. and after he sung, after Roy Acuff sung, they'd all go home. <laughs> So that was that was mostly your social life at yeah, that time. Yeah, it was gathering our on Saturday life. nights yeah, to listen yeah. to the Grand Old Opry and make ice cream. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them uh, around they had pie suppers around, but of course I I wasn't big enough to get involved in any of that. What's a what is a pie supper? They would uh, they would meet somewhere and. Uh, Ladies would bring in pies and, and have an auctioneer that he would auction them all. And uh, the men would buy the pie and then they'd eat with the woman that baked it. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. I've seen that before, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, okay. That was a social so life. If yeah. you really wanted a quarter, then you yeah. needed to buy her pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd buy her pie. Yeah. 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 You read the price Get goes up. Brothers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that before on that Loretta Lynn movie. He did that. He, he bought that pie. But uh, she used salt instead of sugar. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, huh. That's pretty yeah. neat. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they do that to raise funds. And... Did they have like any, like, did you guys have prom? And did you have like dances in the community here? Or? No, not uh, not uh, the school didn't have anything like that. But the community no. probably had yeah. dances and things, or they might. Yeah, I guess they did some sometimes from areas. Yeah. But of course, uh, Dad he wouldn't he wouldn't let us go to anything like that. Oh, really? Yeah. He, Dad, he, <laughs> he, he, he didn't like us to play even Rook. At the, oh. <laughs> he didn't understand that if he, anything that suggested gambling or something, he right. He didn't want us. Uh, He's pretty so conservative, never, wasn't he? Huh? He was pretty conservative. He did. Yes, he was. He didn't Real believe fair. in uh, swimming, mixed swimming either, did no. he? No. Uh. No. -uh. Oh. To uh, what? Well, what about you, what about you driving? I've heard some stories about your 
<laughs> about your driving and your cars you owned back back in the day. Yeah. Huh? Hey, you meddling now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had we had some times in the of course that uh we had uh, an old thirty seven Ford uh, at one time, you know, uh, those old cars had uh, they had mechanical brakes on where they just had the cords run from the wheels into a place in the center of the car there at uh, attached to a lever and when you push the brake down it it pull on those cords and uh, that uh, it wasn't much of a braking system and one one time this friend of mine Kenneth Armitage and uh, me we decided to just try to tighten those cords up on the whole board, see if we could improve the brakes a little. And we got to work and we disconnected the cord there in the middle and we was trying to take up some slack in it and we suddenly saw the times getting away. We had something scheduled that night is a Saturday. So we just tied those cords up so they wouldn't drag the ground. And I drove the car there for about a year without any brakes. <laughs> <laughs> <I just, laughs> and and the uh, funny thing about it, Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Thurm says later he became a state policeman. <laughs> He'd have got me for that. <laughs> he drove around with no yeah, brakes. He got me for that, but I, I drove that thing. Uh, I just geared it down, you know, it just mechanical. Uh, do you do anything to the shocks? I yeah, cut I was the say, shocks. Yeah, cut some the other shocks. modifications, <laughs> didn't you? Cut the shocks off the back so it sway when it uh, when we turned the curve corner and uh, there was a I just gear it down. You know, you go from uh, down to second gear and then down to first and you get almost stopped you can slip it up into reverse and kind of ease the clutch out <laughs> oh my gosh and stop it and uh, there was a restaurant here in Fritzburg a restaurant there where the bank is now and uh, I'd stop there about every morning on the way to school and we'd sit around just a while and time to go to school There'd always be three or four of them boys pile in the car with me to ride on over to school. We'd build up, but when we we turn in the drive, over there are these two big stone pillars on either side of the drive, and you, where you go into the school, and uh, it's just a one-way drive. And we get ready to turn in. I'd shove that thing up in second, you know, and I'd goose it. And, I'd, and they'd lean over, you know, and they'd beg on them <laughs> boys and have a big time. <laughs> you were showing and, off. Yeah, we was have the time. We'd always hoop it up. And I turned in there one morning, and I'd, boy, I poured it on, and I turned up. We, uh, just as I turned in, I made a school bus coming out. Oh, wow. And, uh, I just didn't have time to go to low gear or anything. I just jerked that thing out a second and put it up in reverse and, <laughs> and sat there and slipped the clutch and the, the fin and fenders, they was flopping up and oh. down, but <laughs> oh, we, wow. got, we got stopped before. The <laughs> oh my gosh. That's right here at the school up here. Yeah, the old Frenchburg school, yeah. I don't guess Paul knew about that, did he? No, no, he didn't know. <laughs> I didn't tell him about those things. <laughs> so you had your own car in high school in the 40s, right? Yeah. <laughs> How did you, uh, did you work a job? Oh, or? No, my mom, my mom bought it, yeah. So you made the modifications to your mother's car? 
Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So your mother had to drive it with no brakes. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, she didn't drive it that way. Uh. <laughs> yeah, she got, uh, you know, yeah, he got her another car. <laughs> I got you. Huh. Do you remember when, when you grew up, you pretty much stayed right here in Frenchburg. Right? I mean, right. you really didn't go to even Mount Sterling probably very often, Not did you? Not often. We, when, uh, maybe we'd go sometimes on Saturday to a movie or something down there. But what about Lexington? I mean, would you? Would that be? No, never. Hardly ever went to Lexington. But I bet everybody listened to the cats on the radio and... Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, on the UK with the effort. Yeah. Yeah, everybody. When, 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 to that. when, when, when uh, before you went to the army, I guess that was the farthest you'd ever traveled. But uh, before that, what was the farthest you'd ever traveled before you went to the army? Well, it'd been uh, when we went back and forth to West Virginia. Okay, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and then. Uh, uh, my uncles during the war, they went to Dayton, Ohio, and went to work in the factories up there. We visited them some, and uh, also uh, after Wilma and I married uh, in 48, uh, we, we went to Dayton, I think, in 49. So when I worked up there, uh, maybe a year and a half. Uh, you, you, didn't you go up there with Carl? Dayton. Didn't you go up with Carl Sorrell? Yeah. And Juanita, your sister Juanita yeah. and Carl. You guys, we was up there with them. So yeah. Think you like you li didn't you live in the same apartment complex? Maybe or no. Uh, close? No, we lived in a. When we first went. Uh, we lived with my uncle, uh, Obi Prophet, until I got a job and got us an apartment. Yeah. And uh, and Carl, you said I guess you were in construction Carl, with him. He built he built some <laughs> houses up there. Yeah. And, uh, around uh, in Ohio. He built a lot of stuff around here, too. Yeah. I know he built his yeah. houses. Yeah, he built some here. Do you, but he, he, do you uh, remember anything about the B&C Construction Company? <laughs> With the Buddy and Carl the Construction Company. The Buddy and Carl Construction <laughs> Company. Yeah. You all yeah. built a few things, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we pretty much built uh, the house I live in today. Been a while back, cause they, uh, <laughs> and you were close to them, pretty pretty close. You go on oh, vacations yeah. with yeah, your, yeah. And, we uh, were we were your real sister, close. yeah, yeah. We were real close, uh, but they, uh, yeah. For we started going to Myrtle Beach in '79, and we went every year until. Carl passed away. Yep. Of course, then we continued to go, but uh, my sister didn't go. Then, but right. uh, yeah, there was uh, uh, six of us that traveled a lot together. Uh, Who was the other couple? And, uh, uh, Clinton and Carol Stiltner. She's my first cousin. Uh, her mother was sister to my mother. Okay. And uh, they were the only two girls in that family. Yeah. I didn't know but, that. Uh, but uh, Clinton and Carol and Toad and Carl and Wilma and me, we, I had a band, and uh, we, we traveled a lot together, went a lot of places. But uh, oh, we had a good time together. And, uh, but we started going to Myrtle Beach back in 79, and uh, I've been going for 40 years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, 
Uh, 40 years. Stayed we just same. You place. still do that, yeah. You still, you do. Yeah, we still go. We just went. This year was 40 years. Yeah, we. Uh, <coughs> wow. We went to uh, the regular down Myrtle Beach uh, and uh, went to the same motel for years, years. Uh, our first year that we went, I, before we went, I called and I booked uh, me and Wilma was taking Mary for her graduation present. Your daughter, Mary. And, yeah, and uh, I made reservations a holiday in, and then I, I was talking with Gary Prophet. Uh, him and his wife went down twice a year. They stayed at different places. He told me, he said, oh man, said, you're uptown. That's where all the stuff goes on and on. And he sent me a, one of those coastal magazines and I looked in it and I picked out the motel far the south that was listed, the, <laughs> the Apache Inn. <laughs> and uh, called down there and made reservations. And uh, we went there every year after that. Uh, got to be good friends with the guy had it. And uh, I could call him about February and tell him what rooms we wanted. And he'd have them, he'd have them ready for us when we got there. But yeah, Apache Inn. Yeah. And uh, the last week that Wilma and I stayed there. The day we left, they were moving any equipment to tear it down. Oh, uh, wow. Huh. The ones that uh, that owned it had sold uh, sold it to some a developer, and they was putting a high rise in there. Sure. So they got it in there now, a big high rise place. But uh, it's, uh, yeah. What, what, uh, how many, so how many children do you have? Got four. Four children and their names are? There's Tim. But he's adopted. <laughs> no, no, that's good. So, so just kidding. T Tim. Tim and John, David, and Mary Jane. Mary Jane. So three boys and a girl. And a girl. Right. Girl's a baby. Right. And then how many grandchildren do you have? There's uh, nine Grandchildren. And how many great grandchildren? Let's see. Keeps growing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. We got. Uh, Sorry to keep track two, of it. Eight, ten, uh, ten, fifteen. 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 Fifteen great grands. Right. Mm -hmm. When we all get together, there's thirty-eight of thirty-eight them. Thirty-eight of you. Yeah. That's awesome. That's what we're expecting, yeah, for Christmas, yeah. Yeah, thir you're expecting 38 for Christmas. Yeah. We'll all be at Pap's house. Right, every year. Christmas Eve. Yep. Yeah. Thir 38, and that's, uh, I mean, you start to think about how many people are going to be descended from you, you know? I mean, those, thir those uh, what is how many, great 15 great-grandchildren, I think mm, you said? I mean, yeah. if they have three children each, that's 45 great-great, yeah. you know? So. They grow pretty fast. They, yeah. you'll, have, you'll have over 100 or so, you know, descendants at that point, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Which one of your children was your favorite? <laughs> uh, 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 wouldn't comment me, on that. Me, yeah. of course. <laughs> Which one of your children gave you the most grief? Me. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm his, I'm his favorite now. Cause yeah. <laughs> no, you're we, still grounded. That's why you're yeah, here today, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> been, I'm still grounded. <laughs> We've been blessed. Our children is... Uh, not really. What are some wild Called stories that, that? What's some wild stories that you you can tell about your the, your kids growing up, like Not children? <laughs> yeah. Really, I don't know. They, what's some, what's some mischief that they got into? That's what inquiring minds want to hear. Yeah, they uh, they kept that hit pretty much from me. We were always afraid. We were. Yeah. We were. Pap was pretty intimidating, so. <laughs> they were well behaved then, right? Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah. And they've all done very, very well. 
you know. Yeah. So they've all done, yeah. your children and your grandchildren have done very well, and nobody's been to prison as far as I know, right? So, <laughs> no. So, <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. So. Uh, <laughs> but you know the house that I live in over there now that Carl and me and uh, well, Dad helped us put the foundation in. He carried rocks up there of the creek, and we wow, we put in the foundation, and he helped us. And we we built it and <laughs> remodeled it two or three times. Added Several on, times. And built now, on, and built on. Yeah, and yeah, and then uh, the last uh, couple of jobs. Uh, I hired somebody else to do. Now, when, do now, when did we get indoor plumbing in that house? Let's see. I can't tell. The year, you know, when we built it, we didn't have electricity in up this road here at 36. There was no... Really? We didn't have any electricity. No, we had kerosene lights. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. In the 40s? Yeah. Heated with a coal stove. Yeah, I remember the coal stove. Yeah. Wow. And, we were carrying uh, coal for Dad and for Paul yeah, in his house. Had, a, had an outhouse. and I uh, remember that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, uh, now, outhouse set up there about work. Tim driving now in that mm -hmm. greenhouse, yeah. Well, when did they get electricity up the road? I don't, I don't know. Would that have been in the early 50s, I guess, or? Before you went to the Army, maybe, or? No. No, after, it was, so. No, it, it's, uh, it was after I'd come back from the... Wow, heaven. that's amazing to think about. Yeah, that... Uh, so you didn't run the air conditioner, did you? Uh -uh. No, <laughs> no, we we just opened the window. Yeah. When did you first build that house? The first, because you started out with what about four rooms? Yeah, under roof. Well, yeah, we had that under roof, but uh, that w one room we didn't have finished, uh, so we had had about three rooms finished when I went to the service. They had uh, an Aladdin lamp and <laughs> wow. kerosene. That, and so you had a bedroom, a kitchen, and I guess a living room, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's and, all you needed. That's all we needed. And then uh, when I come home, we finished up the other bedroom. And, and then we built on, we added upstairs. And, but... Uh, yeah, it was after I got home from the army, which would have, uh, I'm, I'm, I'd, I guess around 56 or something like that, that we got electricity. Wow, that's amazing. And plumbing after that. Yeah, yeah, we got plumbing then. Wow, so you hadn't had, you hadn't had plumbing and everything before too long before your no. children were born. No, because I remember mm -hmm. when we got plumbing. Wow. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. But, wow, that's yeah, something John else. was born 54. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, we, uh, so I was probably three or four years old when we got indoor plumbing. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, so you, you wow. You were potty trained on an outhouse. That's right. <laughs> so. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about uh, this cane you got here. This cane. That, that cane belonged to my dad. Uh, God, he had. Uh, he had some, um, and I kept. I kept this one. That's his. That's your yeah. father's cane. Yes. Uh -huh. Where'd it come from? I, th I believe a, a Mr. Spencer that made it for him. 
he made uh, he made him a rocking chair and uh, some canes and. Uh, what was his name? What did uh, they call him? Uh, they called him they called him Whittlemore because he uh, he worked in wood all the time. He made some. Whittlemore Spencer. Whittlemore Spencer. And he lived yeah. here in Frenchburg or. Well, just just out of Frenchburg, he lived uh, out 36 here, uh, just over the hill over there. But uh, How about yeah. this chair here that this you're sitting chair, in today, it belonged to my dad. And he, uh, someone at the church got this chair for him to, to sit in there at the church. And I think you said it'd be about it's about a 70 year old chair. Yeah, guess, it's uh, at least that old. Yeah, pretty neat. It may be older. I don't know because. And what you what you have there in your hand? What's this this uh, well your uh, your your papers here? Oh, this, the papers. This is uh, a copy of my dad's ordination at uh, Ripley Baptist Temple in West Virginia in eighteen ninety six. Eighteen ninety six. His ordination. Yes, and also I had. Uh, a copy of a recommendation from the the state uh, superintendent of education. I have a recommendation from him that was written in, uh, I believe, 1916, recommending dad for any position in the schools they needed. To that's Dad great. had served as a teacher, as uh, attendance officer, and as county school superintendent, and he had served in all those positions. Wow! So, teacher, uh, superintendent, and what? Teacher, superintendent, and what do you say? Uh, attendance. Attendance. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's that's great. Yeah. I, those letters of recommendation, you know, you couldn't just call in references, you know, so you had to carry. Those, yeah. if you were a reputable person, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah that, that's a pretty neat thing to have. He had a good reputation in all areas there, but and well qualified for any. When when you were a little boy, what what did you want to be when you grew up? You know how little boys say, "I want to grow up." When I grow up, I want to be a yeah. policeman. What do you, what <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I want to be another Bill Monroe. <laughs> okay, all right, another Bill Monroe. All right, yeah. <laughs> that, all right, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, well you sure you certainly have sang for many years. Yeah. Uh, Not the high tenor, uh, but you, uh, yeah, we've got we've a been couple of singing quite a while. <laughs> got a couple of recordings under your belt. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have your own CD made, and we'll put a copy of that on this video, yeah, so you got to see that. A couple of CDs. Yeah. Oh. A couple of CDs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what was uh, what was something that you got when you were a little boy that you can remember that you got in big trouble for? <laughs> and we'll keep it appropriate. Remember, anybody can I see remember, this. So. <laughs> I, I know one time he got sent away from the uh, dinner table for a little prayer, he said, didn't you? You remember that? Yeah. Huh? I see. <laughs> You, uh, uh, Paul asked you to bless the food. What'd you say? <laughs> what, what, how'd you tag it at the end of your prayer? Huh? Do huh? <laughs> you remember? No, I don't. That's you said, that. Amen, Brother Ben. <laughs> what else? Shot a rooster and killed the hen. <laughs> yeah. He said, Amen, Brother Ben. Shot the rooster and killed the hen. And Paul sent him away from the table. <laughs> And his sister put him up to that. Okay. Which one was it? Toad? No, it had been Joe. Joe. Yeah, she she uh, was always Joe. the instigator. Okay. Yeah, she was the instigator thing, yeah. And she didn't get in trouble. <laughs> no. <laughs> so she had, she had Pat put that little tag on his prayer and yeah. he got in trouble over it. <laughs> Paul sent him from the table. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything else you can remember? Like no, you got in big I trouble don't for? Think so. I don't think so. You were just a model child, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yes. 
I remember uh, that uh, one time that they got me a, a new pocket knife and before <laughs> before they gave it to me, Dad, he opened up the blade and took it out there and put it down and took a took his old hatchet and he whacked it and, and broke the end off of the blade. So, so you I didn't... just had to do just a little short break. <laughs> He's afraid I might fall on it. Oh and yeah. Stick stick myself or cut myself. Wow. So it didn't have full blade on it. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> It just had about a oh. half a blade on it. <laughs> How old were you then, uh, little, little guy? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't a teenager yet. I was. Yeah. What about your sisters? What did they? Right. Do you remember them getting in trouble for anything? Your sisters? No. All perfect no, children. Not really, we uh, yeah, we had. Uh, I, uh, I remember that. Uh, Sometimes Dad would go away for revival somewhere, and uh, when he came home, uh, us kids we'd uh, get together there in the living room, and we'd have church service. Uh, girls would sing, and I'd preach. And then we'd pass the plate, and Dad would give us the change that he got in that in his revival. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Yeah, he. Yeah, <laughs> so he taught. A lot of people play school or play house. Yeah. You guys played church. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He. He'd split the coins up, I guess. Yeah, he'd give us he give us his change, his two coins he got in. The, Revival. When you were little, how much did a, a, a candy bar and a pop cost? That's what a lot of people like to know is what oh, was a candy bar and a pop? They were nickel. Yeah. Nickel each? So 10 right. cents you could get yeah. a candle? When, uh, you know, when uh, I was in school up there, uh, there was a restaurant right next door to the school. So I'd go over there sometimes to get my lunch. And I'd eat for 15 cents, you know. I'd get me a Coke and a hot dog and sometimes a bag of peanuts. And, uh, <laughs> for 15, 15 cents? 15 yeah. cents. Wow. How much was a gallon of gas, do you remember? It was, uh, it was around 20, 20 cents. You could, uh, you yeah, you could get five gallon per dollar. Wow. They they had the old pumps. Then you they had the lever. You know the tank could hold about ten gallon, and they'd pump that tank full, and then it gravity feed into your tank. Sure. <laughs> and oh, here a while back. Here a while back, I was up here to the dollar store, and some fellow was checking out in front of me. He got a pack of cigarettes, and he paid for them. I asked that clerk when the guy went up. I said, did I hear you say that $5 for a pack of cigarettes? He said, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, I huh? I said, my goodness. I said. I remember back when I was in high school, we could get that Sensation brand of cigarettes for 11 cents. <laughs> 11 cents. For a pack? <laughs> for oh, a yeah, pack. for a pack, yeah. <laughs> and I think 21 in it then for 11 cents, of course. Wow. Uh, Did you ever work? Major brands like Campbell and Lucky Strike. Uh, Marlboro, they were higher, but uh, but guys in school smoking the sensation. <laughs> a lot of people smoked back then too. Did you ever work tobacco? Yeah. Did you ever work tobacco yourself, or? I 
I smoked a little bit. I never did. No, I mean, did, <laughs> did you work in tobacco? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Work in the fields? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I helped uh, my uncle to nurse that tobacco and, uh, and then helped him uh, harvest it, hang it in the barn. I guess most people did back then. Yeah. That was quite yeah. extremely popular in this area. And oh, yeah. And... Uh, Back then in hay, I helped uh, harvest the hay too, and uh, we had uh, a big old stock barn right across to, uh, from the house. It was sitting along in there where that Clark Electric building is. I uh, had the stock barn there, and on the first floor, those stalls for the animals. And then upstairs, loft upstairs, we kept hay. Sure. And it wasn't in bales. We had to put it up there loose. You know, they'd haul it in on the wagon uh, and uh, use those pitchforks. To, somebody on the wagon would put it up through that little long hole in the roof. And then there'd be someone upstairs in that loft uh, that would drag the hay back and pack it in against the wall to right. try to get it all in there. What was your first job? Do you remember your first job? Uh, my first job, uh, after we married, uh, I think a day or two after we married, uh, my uncle come down uh, I want to know if I wanted a job, but uh, I went to work at the sawmill. Okay. Uh, off Baroness was up uh, near East Hill, Kentucky, uh, down on Blackwater. Uh, the man I worked for, he was buying the lumber from uh, another fella had a sawmill down. He was down under the cliff up there. And uh, so I worked the mill there and I separated the uh, lumbers that come off the saw. You know, the two befores and the one inch. And I separated the lumber and put it in separate stacks. And then this truck driver, he had come down there in his truck and put on about a half load, take it up on top of the hill, unload it, come back and get another half, and go up and put that back on, uh, his truck wouldn't come out of there and mm. with a full load. It couldn't couldn't get up that hill. Wow. So there's a lot of work involved <laughs> in that. Sure. Yeah. And uh, they didn't it didn't have a very good road out, and it was. When, when it you were a young when, when you were a young man, do you remember? Do you remember the old folks in the community? Yeah, some of them. I mean, do you remember? Did you ever spend time talking with any of the old folks? Like, did anybody tell you old stories about yeah. the area here in Frenchburg? Or <laughs> my dad was right. Was yeah. From <laughs> <old folks. laughs> Yeah, he, he was sitting pretty old when I was born. Sure, you know, the time sure. I got up, the time I got up to moving around, he was up here. So but uh, how'd you spend your summers in between high school? Working on the farm. Yeah. Your dad's farm? Yeah, yeah. But uh, my uncle was running it. Time, yeah. And and this this question here is a uh, it may it may be a hard question to answer, you know. But uh, do you have do you have any regrets? I mean, you've lived a, a long and prosperous life, and um, do you have any regrets? You know, now that you look back. Well, I guess not. Not really. I'd. Uh, I've thought at times that uh, I'd uh, 
maybe I wouldn't have served on a lot of these committees so I could have spent more time with my wife <laughs> now that she's gone. And uh, I was I was on a lot of boards here. Sure. I was on this health council that was over it that built the clinic and then uh, they asked me to serve on the board of St. Clair Hospital over there. I was on that for 16 years. I finally turned down the last appointment uh, and uh, I was on the mental health board and uh, I was on the uh, health facilities uh, board in uh, the gateway and uh, back then any change that they made in health care whether it's a personal care home a nursing home or a hospital if they wanted to add any equipment or add beds or take away beds we had to review it and approve it right so What's we had a, a lot of that. I thought well, no, I, sure. I'd let someone else handle that. Let somebody else handle spend more, more time. Yeah, spend more time with. I uh, know. Uh, yeah, those times you know that I was at those meetings and uh, well, but she took the kids to the ball game or something. And right. What? What? Uh, uh, this is a hard question too, but. Uh, um, what is something that uh, you're most proud of? What What is something that, you know, in your days, that something you, you can hang your hat on for your life, what is something that you were the most proud of? Uh, I don't know. The thing I'm the most proud of is my family. Okay. And uh, God's blessed me with a wonderful family. And then uh, I'm grateful for uh, the fact he used me in the church here and all because, uh, but I mean, I don't claim any credit for that. That all goes to the Lord, but he used me and I'm glad I was willing to let him because when when I started down there in that little church, we you get 60 people in there, you had a big crowd. Right. And back in our better years here, we, we averaged 250 a Sunday here. Right. Quite a while. Right. It's not that much now because a lot of people died and moved away. And sure. Back then, uh, uh, the job corps up here would bring down a van load every mm -hmm. Sunday too. They don't. I don't think they go to church anymore. <laughs> what? what uh, and as you are our, you know, a senior person in all of our lives, what is some words of wisdom or words of advice that you would give your descendants and every everybody else that's young? What's something that you would like to tell? Your great 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 grandchildren, you know, what's something that's important that you think they should know? Well, the most important thing that I can tell them, you know, is a person needs to be right with the Lord, the most important thing, and then uh, let Him direct her their path. You know, the Bible says the steps of a good person are ordered of the Lord. And uh, he, uh, he'll do a lot better job than we will. So sure. <laughs> let him have his way. And uh, he'll keep us from a lot of heartaches and pitfalls. I think if we let him control his lives, I have uh, I can look back and I can see where he's kept me from making mistakes, overruled some of the things that I planned. And, but I've, 
I've had a wonderful life. God's blessed me and he's given me a wonderful family, lots of friends. And uh, I have a lot of people that they always uh, there for me when I need something. Uh, right. our, our church family here, they everybody's awful good to me. I've been blessed. You know, one thing that uh, we said in our live video that I'm going to so make sure it's on this video that we haven't said is, is uh, and as I guess we'll wrap it up, I guess, here soon. But uh, one, one of the things I wanted to bring up is uh, you guys uh, have the quartet, a family right. quartet, uh, right. the, the right. Rhodes family quartet. I think you, yourself and, <clears throat> and uh, two of your sons and your daughter plays piano and sings. And, right. and uh -huh. uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, Rhodes quartet. Well, uh, we we started singing uh, years ago. I'm not sure how many, but in the beginning, uh, it was uh, me and Wilma and uh, and uh, John and Toad and Joe. Toad, yeah. Me and Joe Wilma played piano. And, Toad and, and Joe played the piano for so, we Toad started, would sing? We sung. Toad would sing? Toad sung. Oh. Yeah. We started, that was in 1978 when she we was, started singing together all was, the time. She was a good good singer, Toad was, yeah. She, alto. 78, that's 41 years ago. Wow. <laughs> that, that's when I started singing with him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now you guys have a couple CDs. You've done revivals all over the place. You guys are uh, actually uh, on TV. Yeah, you know. Uh, tell yeah. tell yeah. us about that. Well, we made the uh, we made the CDs to help finance the camp up there too. Bible camp. Mm -hmm. All the uh, all the proceeds from those CDs goes to camp. Yeah, we don't keep anything of it. Neat. And, uh, and you guys sing on TV. What what once a month? Twice a month? Well, What's occasionally up at WLJC, where yeah. we probably average. Uh, I don't know, once a quarter maybe, or okay. sometimes more often. Yeah. And that, that, for the, if you don't know, WLJC is a TV show or TV channel. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Runs all over yeah. here in, in Kentucky. Yeah. And, and uh, our church now has uh, a weekly program on WLJC. Yeah, every Sunday afternoon at well, 4 Every Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Our, our church turned this on, and we usually sing. Right, a song or two on that uh, on sure. the program. So yeah, so that's, that's uh, also available on live streaming on the internet. www.wljc.com. Wljc.com. And I'm, do they have uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, can you go back and look at old, older shows? Archives. And yeah, archives. Yeah, they do mm -hmm. the archives and things. They do. So. That's pretty special on there. I know it's uh, an old family, old, family all over turn, tunes in when y'all are on there. So, and folks recognize you from that, don't they? I think yeah. that helps you. Oh, and yeah. it helps in Johnny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, hey. I've been recognized with customers when I call on customers yeah. for business. Yeah. Y'all ever sign autographs or? So. <laughs> <laughs> About Rarely. every time uh, <laughs> I get out and go anywhere, I run into somebody that. Uh, Recognize me. I go to Walmart. And That's very recognizable. Moorhead. <laughs> yeah. uh, always run into people that recognize me. And, uh, sure. Uh, You've been a good positive name to drop. You know, you <laughs> folks want to be associated with you. So that yeah. means you must be good people if, <laughs> if you're associated with you. So. But uh, John, is there anything that we've we forgotten to bring up, or not that I think of at the moment? It's it's certainly been fun to rehash and hear. Is there anything you'd like these. to say to your dad? You know, while we're here on. Oh, he's my hero. Always has been. He's been a great role model, a great example to follow for for anybody and. 
I'm just privileged, uh, thankful to, to be in his family. Boy, that's a, I can't think of a better compliment yeah. to have him a son yeah. to hear that here is hero. I mean, yeah. Mr. Rose, is there anything that you wanted to, anything else we haven't talked about that you want to bring up or? No, I, I think we've covered pretty much. Well, well, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much for giving us your time um, to share these, these stories and these experiences with us. Um, these things are absolute gems to folks like myself. They're a huge value that are for your family and, and really the community that uh, are going to want to see this. And, and I'm glad that you gave us the time to uh, uh, spend with us and give us these stories that will be handed down for literally hundreds of years. Folks are, you know, will be able to see this and learn about uh, your life and the stories that you've had. And, and uh, thank you so much for that and, and, sure. your, and your, your uh, input on the community and, and, uh, and influence and, and all the souls that have been saved under your, under your, your guidance. And uh, we're so blessed to have you around. So anything else, John? But, uh, yeah. So, all right. So we'll sign off here. And, and uh, hey, remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.